I want to talk about this bow with you guys real quick like here. This is probably one of the worst hack jobs for a bow that you could ever imagine. This was one of the first bows that I ever made. Just went out in the woods with an axe and a, and a file and a knife and said, I'm just going to make a bow out of this tree. And I'll tell you what, this is one of my favorite bows to this day. And this bow's a couple years old now, uh, maybe three years old actually. But it's got a repair in the limb right here where it had a crack, a small crack. So I went ahead and wrapped it and then put pine pitch glue over the top of it, hide glue and pine pitch over the top of it. Um, the knock points are just hacked in there with a file. It's not finished at all really. I mean you can still see file marks and stuff all over the bow where it's got file marks on it. It's never been sanded down or finished. Everything was cut into it, you know, with knives and, and, and uh, multi-tool saws and things like that to make it. Um, it's not by any means a work of art, but to me it is a work of art because it's so functional. I mean, it's got a deer leg handle on it here. It doesn't even have a good leather wrap. It's got a deer leg sewn on the front of it for a handle here. I've sewed it down the center and just tied it off with a piece of leather cordage. And it's got a handmade Flemish twist string on it. But I'll tell you, this bow, and you can see it's a little bit off center shot. It's not in the center. If it was in the center, this bow would break. That's why you can't make them center shot. There's, wood's just not strong enough for that. But, you know, as bows go, I love this bow. I would shoot this bow at any deer, any given time, at 10 to 15 yards, without even thinking twice about it. It's plenty fast. It's about 55 pounds right now. Um, it's almost probably, by now, it's probably good and dry, and there's no doubt about that. Um, I just put a second coat of tongue, tongue oil on it, just to seal a little bit better again, when I pulled it out today, to bring it out here. But uh, I'll tell you, it shoots accurate, it shoots great, it's strong. It's not going to break. I've shot thousands of arrows through it. And as crappy as it looks and as hacked up as it looks, this is just an example of how things don't have to be perfect to be functional. And that's what I wanted to share with you guys before we go to this next segment in this video. Morning, guys. Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. Uh, in the last video that we shot, just wiped dirt on my face. That's crazy. Um, anyway, the last video that we shot uh, this morning was on arrow mentality, the archer's paradox, and things of that nature. And I wanted to shoot a video with you guys on how to make some common man broadheads for your arrows that we discussed yesterday when we made that common man arrow out of that dowel rod. So what I did was I went to Menards this morning and I bought this piece of, this is a piece of 16 gauge I believe it is. Let me look to verify that to make sure. 16 gauge weld steel, it's called. 16 gauge weld steel. This sheet was five dollars. There's enough metal here to probably make 50 broadheads. Well, I, yeah, probably pretty close to it. I mean, over 30 anyway. So at five bucks, I mean, if you can get 50 out of it, that's five cents a broadhead. Now, I did add a couple things to our toolkit that we had in our common man pack just to help us in manufacturing these arrows today. And what I did was I bought not a hacksaw blade, but a metal cutting blade for a sawzall that will fit into our vice grips in the same fashion that we showed the other day for the regular saw blade. And that will give us, crank that down good and tight, that will give us a metal cutting blade so we can cut this sheet metal. Now you could use tin snips for this if you wanted to invest in a pair of them. I'm trying to stay common man with this whole thing and the whole theme of this and show you guys how to do it cheaply and effectively and be able to carry these tools with you for use in the future as well. So you can put this saw blade in your little tool roll that you've got with your other saw blade, your vice grips, and your four-way, your four -way and you're good to go. Uh, the other thing I did purchase today was a small rat tail file, and I think this cost me $2.50. You could probably get one cheaper somewhere else. I bought this one at Menards. The saw blade itself was $2.50. So I've got $10 in this kit that I'm going to use to make these broadheads. So if I get 50 broadheads out of this sheet, and I've got ten dollars in it you know I'm doing pretty good but I think I could at least get 30 out of it anyway so we're gonna show you guys today how to make broadheads out of this stuff and how to do it field expediently right here at our camp okay the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out what the pattern of our broadhead is gonna be and we're just gonna use a triangle shape for our broadhead and once we get one triangle piece cut out right here then we can just use the opposite triangle all the way down going opposite directions back and forth and we'll have a whole row of broadheads here 
a row here and a row here. So we can get three rows times however many we get out of one side of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some kind of a straight edge like this saw blade and I'll just grab my multi-tool out and get the awl and I'll use that for a scribe on here. And I want this broadhead to be about two times as long as it is wide. So I just put an angle on there and I'm not real particular about how perfect that angle is. And then I want to make an angle, a triangle out of this thing. And like I said, I want it to be twice as long as it is wide. And I'd like to get it about, you have to have in the state of Ohio, it has to be three quarters of an inch wide, I believe, cutting surface to be legal. Don't quote me on that, I think that's right. So I'm going to take my multi-tool and just look and see. There's two inches right there. There's an inch and a half. An inch and a half is a pretty good width of a broadhead. So I'm just going to scribe that real quick right there, just like that. And then I'm going to go back and follow that for my triangle. Going up to my line where I just made. I'll put that right there. And I'll scribe another line. And that triangle right there will be cut out, and that will give me my broadhead. Now I want to make sure that those angles are the same. It doesn't look to me like they are. I'm going to have to widen that out a bit to get a good triangle out of that. Because that angle doesn't look the same, and that's important. And this is all trial and error, and you have to look at it. So I'll scribe another line down through here real quick. And look at that and see if that looks better. And that does look better. So that's what we're going to use. That's a little bit wider. But that's okay. Now all I'm going to do is take my metal saw. Now that I've got my scribed lines here. And I'm just going to cut that blade out of the sheet of metal. And this will probably take a few minutes. Like I said, if I had... Get a start going here somewhere. Alright, so we'll get this cut out and we'll get right back to you. Okay, now I went ahead and finished this up with a pair of snips. And that was tough enough, let me tell you. I cut about, I don't know, an inch and a half. It took me about three or four minutes to cut an inch and a half of this metal. This 16 gauge metal is heavy. So if you're going to do this by hand with a handsaw, it's going to take you a long time. For sake of this video, I wanted to get it done quick. But when you cut this stuff with snips, you get this bent up looking thing here. We'll have to hammer this out with our axe and straighten it out. And then we'll start working on it. But you could take this sheet home if you have a bandsaw or a skill saw or something like that. You, know, you could cut 20 arrowhead blanks out of this thing in just a matter of minutes and keep them in your pack for later use as blanks like we've talked about in many other videos uh, as far as utilizing resources. But I wanted to show you how you get and in the next one. Obviously, you're just going to cut from here and then opposite all the way down. And it looks to me like you could probably get 20, 20 of these in a row off of here probably. So you're talking maybe 60 broadheads off of this. So let's get back to this bad boy and get it straightened out and banged down. Make sure it's even and we'll finish it up. Okay, now I just pulled this flat rock out of my spider shelter here uh, that I've been using for my hearth in there. And I'm just going to straighten this broadhead out by pounding it flat on this rock. And I can see that my angle's a little bit off. So I'm going to have to trim it a little bit. I'll do that before we finish this up. We got a good straight flat edge. Looks like we do. And now we can start to work on it. So we got the basic shape of our broadhead now, right here. Now we need to start working on this thing and getting it to where we want it so that we can use it for an actual point on an arrow to kill an animal with. And what I'll probably do with this, first of all, 
is I'll just trim these two corners off real easy just like this and the reason I'm doing that is so that if I put these in a quiver in a basket quiver they don't hang up coming out just little things that you learn over time of doing this stuff if you've got real sharp corners there it's gonna hang up on you coming out of a quiver and you don't want that and you don't really need those two points there anyway they don't really serve a function <clears throat> all right so now we've got our basic shape that we want now we got to half this as well so we have to think about an area where we can wrap this for hafting and I'm just gonna go down into here somewhere and that's why I've got the rat tail file and I'll take this and I'll just stick this in my vice grips that I've got here and crank it down in there and I'll use this rat tail file to mill out a notch and I just want to put that in there straight like that crank that down and then just go to work with this rat tail file right in that spot and again you've got to get yourself a start there it takes a little bit of time but once you get a start, then you can start really going after it. And the reason I use this rat tail file is it just kind of makes a round indention in the broadhead right there. It doesn't make a squared off edge. So it's not going to cut my bindings. And this doesn't have to be real deep either. It just needs, needs to be deep enough. for my lashings to go around it and I lash this to my arrow here in a minute and you can see that notch and that's probably just deep enough so now what I'll do is I'll go to the other side exactly opposite that and I'll make another one okay once we've got both of our notches cut into it what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in our vice grips just like it would be hafted onto the arrow get our four-in-one tool and I'm just going to start filing one side down, one edge down, to sharpen it. And I'm only going to sharpen one edge. I'm not going to do a double, a double bevel here. I'm not going to bevel both sides. I'm going to do one angle here and one angle here on opposite sides for my cutting blade. I'm not worried about making razor blades here. All these, all these things have to do is cut through an animal. And that point's going to help it do that. But once that point enters the skin, I want to make sure that there's a little bit of a cutting surface here to help the arrow in. And this is not perfect and it doesn't have to be. Like I said, it, we're not making razor blades here. We're making tools that will kill an animal and these will definitely do that. So we'll sharpen this side and then we'll flip it over and we'll sharpen this side on the opposite. So our angles are going in two opposite directions for cutting. And we just got to work through that until we get what we want. Then we'll be ready to haft it. Okay, now once I get that worked down pretty good with that four and one on both sides, not worried about getting the final sharpening on this yet. I'll go ahead and half this point on the arrow. Then I'll use my multi-tool file for the final sharpening of this thing. But now we have a serviceable arrowhead that we can mount. I'm going to show you how to do that expediently right now. Okay. To half this arrow head on here, we're going to have to slit this arrow. Now you could do one of two things. You could just split this thing, which I don't like to do that. That makes arrows weak if you do that. I like to actually cut a notch in there. This 16 gauge steel is about the same thickness as a saw blade for a multi-tool and that makes them ideal for making these cuts and we need to cut that oh about down to right there so I'll go ahead and uh, just mark that real quick with a tick from my saw right in that part I burnt then I'll know how far I've got to cut that down to notch it get my saw out and we'll go after that I'll get to you when I get her cut out Okay, to finish this up, I'm just going to get a small fire started here. And I'm going to bring my components I'm going to use over here, including my arrowhead. And all I'm trying to do now is I want to get this hot, hot glue melted a little bit. 
and put down into my notch. And I want to get that notch heated up with the glue that's in there. And you can see how that's starting to melt now and go down into that notch, and that's what I want. Okay, now I'm going to melt this down a little bit, get my notch heated up, seat this arrowhead exactly where I want it in this notch. Just like that. Let that glue set up for a minute. Okay, now that I've got my arrowhead seated in the notch, I'm going to go ahead and take some of this bank line that we used the other day. This stuff works pretty good. Like I said, I'm just going to unthread it just like the last time I did so that I get it down to where I've only got one piece of thread because that's the only thickness I need. I don't need two of these or three of these for sure. I'll pull out a piece about a foot long and that's what I'm going to use to wrap this arrow and as soon as I get this unbound and get this piece out of here and cut off, we'll get this, there we go, almost got it. Okay, now this is what we're going to use to wrap our arrow and what I'll do is I'll start by dragging a piece down in through that notch and then I'll just wrap it around this way a couple times and then I'll go crossways a couple times down through here come up go crossways a couple times through here go around the bottom a couple times and I'll end up down here on the bottom and I'll glue that and this end down with some of this glue that I've got in this glue stick right here. We'll get this melted in our fire a little bit. Put some of it right on top of that, just like this. And then we're going to melt this on our lashings. Okay, now you can use pine pitch for this. You can just use regular hot melt glue. This just happens to be Archer's glue, like I said, and it works pretty good. I just want to smear this all over my threads and I can melt it down later to make it look pretty. Right now, I'm just trying to get a good coating on my lashings of this stuff. And it's going to be not going to be real pretty at first. not going anywhere now guys. Now we got to do is final sharpening and shaping of our point once that dries. Okay now that our resin's dry that thing's not going anywhere it's on there. It ain't coming off and it ain't moving. Now we take our fine file our multi-tool and we can start working this edge on this point. And this is where we make our final sharpening to get this thing to the edge we want. Now this is a this is not a high carbon steel or anything that's going to hold an edge for a long period of time but it really doesn't have to all it has to do is pierce the skin of an animal and drive into them so as long as we got a good sharp point on here and a pretty good edge the best edge we can get and that's why I said only file one side of the edge don't try for a double edge just make your edge on one side here and one side here and you'll get plenty of cutting power to get into the animal that way. And that will give you a good, inexpensive broadhead, very cheaply, very effective, very efficient, for very little money. Now we can make probably 50 anyway broadheads now, and it's not costing us hardly anything to make these things, it's just taking time. But that's how you make and haft a handmade broadhead, two blade broadhead, to an oak shaft. And now we have a usable hunting arrow beyond a shadow of a doubt for bigger game. Okay, one little tip or trick at the end here. What I usually do is I'll take my file and I'll just bevel that point at the top on both sides just a little bit. 
just like this just to give me a little extra cutting surface right there at the tip where I'm going to get penetration into the animal and it's just a very slight little bevel I'm not really trying to sharpen anything just trying to bevel it because I've already got my edge here and I've already got my edge here I'm just trying to bevel that down just to give me a little bit more cutting surface right there at the tip I'm going to go back and shoot this block from 20 yards. Alright guys, that's 20 yards. Bullseye's here. We've got an 80 inch kill zone and a deer easy enough. Look at the penetration of that block target. That's heavy duty. All right, well, my name is Dave Canterbury with Pathfinder School. I appreciate you guys joining me for this segment on making a common man's broadhead for your arrows. We uh, shot a few demo shots at the end of this video for you out of this old self bow. Like I said, it's got probably uh, 50, 52 pounds of draw, but we got plenty of penetration. In all these targets we shot at, no doubt in my mind, this thing would kill a deer. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this segment, and I appreciate your support, I appreciate your views, and I appreciate everything that you guys have done for me, and I'll keep making videos just as long as I can keep making them, guys. Thank you very much.